guys? It's your boy Alex, and we are back with some more reaction videos once again. And I know a lot of you have been asking me to get back to certain reactions, you know, like, you know, SML and like, um, you know, Nostalgia Critic. I mean, recently you guys asked me to do a Nostalgia Critic reaction video, and I'm going to try to get back to that. I'm, I'm going to try my best, and a lot of you have been asking new reactions, and I'm trying my best to get to them and do other certain things you know, for you guys, you know, because you guys are awesome, you deserve stuff like that. Uh, but more recently, this is one that has been a recent reaction, and I didn't want it to, you know, be a long wait for that person because they have been really awesome with reaction requests. So, yeah. Anyway, speaking of reactions that have been asked uh, recently of you guys, we're doing another Cat Icarus review. Or, sorry, Cat Icarus review reaction. I don't know how to talk about that. But yes, today we are actually looking at his review on the game Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled, which is a racing game. And if I'm going to be completely honest with you guys, I'm not the biggest fan of racing games. I think they're fine, actually. I've just not been a big fan of, like, racing games. I mean, I'm, I'm more of a fan of Mario Kart, per se, mostly. That might be my one all-time favorite, like, racing game. Just other racing games in general are okay, in my opinion. Not the biggest fan, but I think they're fine, anyway. Now, a racing game about Crash Bandicoot? That's kind of questionable, considering I've never played the original um, Crash Team racing game. And yeah, the PS4 is a remake of that game. You know what? Let's, let's actually just dive right into the video and see what happens. Okay, this is a new intro we're seeing for Caddy. I'm assuming since he's reviewing a Crash Bandicoot game, this is like a Crash Bandicoot month intro that he's doing? I'm not even sure what's happening. I guess we'll just start the video to see what's happening. So, without further ado, let's dive right into Caddy's review of Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuel and see if this is the actual intro for it or something I'm, I'm not even sure anyway start the video in three two one and let's go and yeah you probably noticed that i'm in a different setting this is my actual room that i'm recording this in hopefully it's much better for you all oh what have they done to crash just the eyes i i can't handle the sunken in eyes of crash and Aku Aku looks like he was just, like, compressed and squished. Like, you know, like, those hydraulic press things? Well, it's kind of like that, but, like, sideways. Like that. Oh, just the eyes. Crash, my boy! What have they done to you? Oh, I can't, I can't handle it. Let's just, let's continue on with the video, at least, because we barely even started this. We're not even past the intro. Oh, there's Caddy running alongside him, I guess. Are they racing? Oh, it was for a Crash Bandicoot month. All right. Also, I'm going to make sure that the volume is turned up for you guys. Uh, so you guys can hear it. So, give me one second. Oh, yeah, it's turned all the way up. Jeez. Yeah, sad to think about um, Crash Twin Sanity. Never got past the first stage. Hard to believe. It was for a remake. It was closer to a remastering with a few extra bells and whistles, but Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuel? I've been wanting a Crash Team Racing I'm guessing that's a character for Crash Team Racing. Finally did it on PS4, but also decided to add in so much more to the point of it being a full-on remake with customization, online play. Oh yeah, I could pause this and talk about that for like a second. Yeah, that seemed to be the thing with like most um, racing games. That kind of like why I grew out of like a lot of racing games is the character customization and the cart customization. Even though most people at that time only cared about, like, the gameplay and how the racing works. Not card customization. Or character customization or anything to do with customization. Just the kart racing. That's the one thing I remember that people really loved about racing games. Just the cars and, like, how fast you can go and how the gameplay feels. 
Nowadays, it's just about the customization. Much, guys. Not forgetting as well the inclusion of 18 CTR tracks, 13 Nitro Kart tracks, and a bonus PS4 track totaling up to 32 tracks, along with 7 CTR and 5 Nitro Kart battles. Dang, tracks. that's a lot of tracks! The roster for characters from CTR and Nitro Kart. Nitro Fuel, just open it up and let me stick it in! Nowadays, I don't get that excited for new game releases, but this was indeed one of them, and the more footage I saw about the game, the more hyped I got. Especially since, in mm -hmm. my opinion, Crash's racing career as a whole has gone a little bit downhill since the original CTR. Mm. Crash Nitro Kart, it was okay, it wasn't quite what I was looking for. It didn't feel anywhere near as satisfying to play with the controls, especially. And Crash Tag Team Racing... Um... Go away. <laughs> okay. Game up and go straight into adventure mode. Fasten your seatbelts for a Beanox recreation. <gasps> Nostalgia overload, oh, it's on, it's on now, let's go. Um. Oh gosh. Software license and service agreement. Damn it. Oh yeah. I can't skip it. The terms and the terms and agreement. Yeah, this is me right now <laughs> when it comes to terms and agreement. All of that now. Onto the girl. Leave me alone. Adventure mode. Who do I pick this time? Oh lord, look at this retro PS. Well, that just popped up. Give me one second. Oh wait, I was given a review code for the game. Take my positive reception. I think for now I'm going to okay. go with Cortex, solely because he made this noise into insanity. And then we move on to the classic first screen and get greeted by our witch doctor mask telling us what's going down. Now, if you pick a good guy and get Aku Aku, luckily he sounds just as deep and omnipotent as ever. To get a turbo boost. Also, I think that's been the same voice of Aku Aku from most of the other games. Now is that he hasn't got Lockjaw. Uka Uka is free. But he can't, <laughs> it can't be. Get ready because somebody decided to give him a sexy jazz musician voice. You can travel around this area and practice your driving skills. I mean, I'm not complaining. Oh, that's... That is not the right voice. Yeah, that voice made the character more tense. All the way to this. When they flash, it signifies they are open to play. Oh man, the memories. Look at this. Look at this. It's just as I remember it, except I can tell what things are now. Honestly, I don't need to play the game. I'm just happy to sit right here. And look at Cortex's hair um, bouncing around like two windsocks. Sorry, sorry, I'm getting distracted. <laughs> Onto the actual racing. Now, I think it's important to state right here, right now, that I'm talking about this game assuming you already know a little bit about the original Crash Team Racing on PS1. And if you're unfamiliar, then I suggest clicking on the top right of this video to go and watch my video I made about that game. It's a bit old, but so is your mum. Unless you head for the control options and change them, they kept the controls mostly the same. No R2 accelerate trigger shit here. Uh... Okay. Down on the analog stick to reverse is a little bit odd, but easy enough to get used to. And for everything else, well, yes, they knew what wasn't broken and so didn't fix it. It controls more or less identically to before, with the only major control difference being with the turning. I don't know about you guys, but I found Nitro Fuel to be a little bit more responsive in the turning and less loose. And that was far from a problem in the original game, but drifting constantly isn't as much of a necessity as it was before to get the basic hang of the tracks, and turning tight to corners felt way more doable, especially while drifting. It's still heavy and nowhere near as quick to turn as Mario Kart though, which is what I love about CTR, don't worry. It just feels a little bit more lenient with some of the tighter 90 degree plus turns, and it's still massively challenging and engaging to get good with. Even high end speed and low level turn characters don't feel too bad to handle. And even if this isn't the case, the game as it feels to play is just as How is it that Crunch is able to fit in a tiny car like that? The raw guttural sounds of the engines dancing with the chunky vibrations of the controller, the heaviness of the carts and how they impact every surface like an atomic bomb to make boosts just that little bit more satisfying after jumping from a ramp and not only that but how hectic everything remains to be after 20 years despite no new power-ups in fact is it just me or does this game feel even faster than the original not only do the ai racers give you their all leading to way too many close calls especially at the end of the adventure mode with only the most skillful of driving and drifting being able to save you but also with the new boosting system ripped straight from crash nitro car the speeds i was able to reach on certain stages felt almost illegal i mean you could go fast in the original but now jesus h crinkle many stages first um... to actually use the okay. brake button to avoid flying into a wall, which again makes the driving and stages themselves that extra level of captivating. If you're unfamiliar, the new boost system is as follows. You tap R1 to jump and hold it while turning to start drifting once you land on the floor. While drifting, you can boost up to three times by tapping the L1 button hmm. when your exhaust flames go black or when the
the burnout meter turns red down here. But the longer you leave the burnout meter as close to the top of the gauge as possible, the bigger boost you're awarded with after three consecutive perfect boosts. Go too far and you cancel out any kind of boost whatsoever. This turns an already cool mechanic into a true risk and reward system that benefits top tier level players as well as punishes them for getting it wrong, which is brilliant for competitive play. And there are much Okay, so it's safe to say that- Okay, I question the fact that like Crunch was able to fit in a car, but Tiny? Smoke or use the classic boost meter I don't even know anymore. Give you a more general idea but it's safe to say that like you have to get the boost at like the right moment or else you're not gonna boost. boost. Along with a more detailed look at what the perfect time to boost is. Or you can use a speedometer that does absolutely nothing, but at least it shows you how good your jump boost will hmm. be based on your air time. You can use the corner of your eye to see how far the redness of the meter in the corner is going for a more accurate chance to get a boost or focus entirely on the race in front of you and use a more vague but still functional visual indicator on your car. Again, another risk reward system within the risk reward system. And I would argue it even brings an element of rhythm to the game that the original didn't have. I'm sure you've also noticed by now that this game is so damn beautiful. Yeah, not gonna lie. The game looks visually beautiful. And I think considering this is the same people that did Crash uh, Insane Trilogy with the visuals and that. So this definitely looks beautiful. I'm not going to lie. Not going to knock the game for that. It's a racing game that's also a Mario Kart clone, but still looks visually beautiful. And I think this was... Could you imagine if this was on the PS5, actually, how much more beautiful it would have gotten? It made me want to say out loud, crap, the Russians. Wait, wait, what? The original game, I think, Okay, that's terrifying. He did take liberties and cuts against the graphics Crash was best known for at the time for the sake of getting the game running perfectly. A choice that I... Well, yeah, if you think about it, it makes more sense because Crash was from the PlayStation, so the graphics would make sense on that. Luscious visuals Crash is best known for even to this day and gets away with it much more without sacrificing... Still questioning, though, how tiny is able to okay, fit kind of inside of a car. I have absolutely no issue with the frame rate dropping or stuttering, but I will be honest, 30 FPS instead of 60 was a little bit of a letdown, especially on PS4 Pro. But after five minutes of playing, I barely noticed or cared. It was like magic. Almost like how the PS4 version of Insane Trilogy ran at 30, but the impeccable cartoony animations and slight use of motion blur made it barely mm. noticeable for me when that game first released. Yep. Compared to the original, there's also way more detail and kinetic energy in the stages, with more classic crash enemies hiding in the background, more audience members cheering, Hearing, and some of them are enemies from the other crash games each corner of the map and there's all the little mm. tiny details Sorry about that, that. Add to the overall brilliance had a you weird burp spasm of certain characters bouncing against the breeze the spoilers and bodywork of certain carts bend and bow depending on how you drive tiny tiger's loincloth flaps uh... <laughs> he hasn't got his butt out so the game is a two out of ten did you know these things were supposed to be I don't know why you'd be excited about that the sewer in this game is so rich and vibrant I feel like I can properly smell it and that's the only time in history we're saying that out loud is a good thing. As far as adventure oh, mode goes, geez. it has indeed made a comeback and has all the same challenges and little hub world to explore. I've always loved adventure mode. But if you're expecting anything new in it, there isn't really, aside from the fact that you can switch characters and cards whenever you want instead of being stuck with one. Yes, even with all those new Nitro Kart tracks ported in from the PS2 to here, which I will be honest is a slight downer, which essentially makes those tracks only good for multiplayer oh, and geez. for in-game This area looks like a Rainbow Road, road type like track. Okay, well, I guess you've also got the Entropy Ghost type time trials for those stages so you can unlock him too. <sighs> I'm not that bothered really, it's fine. I just think that for the effort gone into the added characters and tracks from Nitro Kart, they could have been used a little bit more inclusively for single players only and give them more of a reason to be in the game for adventure progression. I mean, until I started local and online multiplayer, I totally forgot the Nitro Kart tracks were even in the game. And that's a huge shame too, because those tracks are genuinely very good and even include those exclamation marks. Oh, I'm pretty sure people got mad at stuff like that. <laughs> for competitive play. Oh, because that people, would be like, like just hard to like get Get past. Another avenue to unlock more of the customization options only available in adventure mode. Don't get me wrong though, that's a little bit of a nitpick because as for the rest, it's all back and it's prettier than ever. The CTR token challenges and time crate relic races are still great. Yeah, you can see there's like time, time trial time things, which the, ins and outs of the, the original game Crash game trilogy game had stuff like that. Allow you to enjoy the immense time and effort clearly gone into the track designs from the original game. You interact and explore the tracks in a very special way in CTR to the point of the tracks being more memorable to me personally than anything in Mario Kart, which just lets you breeze by everything without looking deeper into it even when you find a specific shortcut in a stage in ctr the shortcuts mm -hmm. are way more subtle and require a little bit especially to find secrets 
uh, whenever you want to in certain Super Mario Kart things. Oh, that's the Switch version of uh, Super Mario Kart 8 for some reason. You better watch out for those shortcuts though, because if you're oh, not careful and aren't sorry. attention. Forgot that was there. The Give me one second. No, no, nope, nope. no. Nope. I gotta get, get that off there. The come on, come on. Come on. Ten seconds off your final time. Nope. Yes, another Give crash me. platforming mechanic organic. Oh, up there it is. Sorry, I had to grab where it was. There we go. They can seriously f off. Now I'm somebody who has platinumed every single stage of Crash 1 to 3, including the new downloadable stages on the Insane Trilogy, only on my Switch because I could spend... I mean, with it being on the Switch, you'd actually have more time to do stuff like that if you're on the go. It's not happening. I'm not touching them. It's easier going after the Entropy Ghost Lap times because at least all you need to do there is focus on driving really fast. But here, you have to drive fast, boost practically every second your car is on the floor, while aiming at all the time crates that oftentimes only allow you one chance per lap to hit them and that is much more difficult than it sounds too fast when jumping a ramp and you go over the boxes too slow and you fall under them you have to go fast to get the best time but steering while drifting is way harder than just going into the time crates manually but of course you get the minus 10 yeah that could be really annoying box, so it's definitely worth it and with many of the boxes, they should have gotten more air time from like that like spreading out like that it without ruining your time on the next lap so just hit restart and try again i only managed to get two platinum relics on adventure mode two and they were on the two final bonus stages unlocked for beating all the other options Optional stuff beforehand, including all five of the colored gem tournament cups. And with those two relics, I wasn't even trying to go after the platinums. I was just playing safe and aimed at all the boxes, hoping that I would get a gold. So I can only assume that the times for these tracks are really, really kind. On the turbo track stage, I even missed a box and had to turn around to hit it again, and yet still came out with a platinum relic. After going through any Oof. of the challenges, though, you end up at the podium, and luckily, you get no more creepy bitch staring into your very being. Ah! But you do get to see Engine with his eye coming out. I never knew Engine could take that eye out. PlayStation 1 can be terrifying. It's a... So is that! A while ago, I also mentioned briefly that you could get Crash Bandicoot was meant as a kids game, right? Parts, costumes, and characters, including all the available ones from Nitro Kart. And no, this is not microtransactions, even though it. Oh, here's the one thing I was more worried about. Make the microtransactions. You just race. As long as it's not loot boxes, I I think I'll be fine. And then spend it on whatever you want in the store, with new special costumes and packs being thrown into a deal every 24 hours, and everything you purchase rotating the unlocks you have yet to grab. I don't mind this system, mostly because of the amount of customization stuff to find is practically criminal, and also because it doesn't involve any real-life money to even speed it along. So right now he's just use it and unlock the stuff listing off the, the other cool stuff he can do in this game. When, at least depending on what's available, it makes it a little bit more bearable too. With customization, you can also mix and match practically anything you Sorry, I had to pop my neck there for like a second. Jobs, decals, characters, and costumes. Oh my god, is that Ripperoo's costume from Crash 2? My god. They really went far beyond <laughs> That, I was that is adorable, I'm not gonna lie. You may want to look as ridiculous as possible, and that is indeed tempting, but sometimes it's the simplicity of some of the costumes that's enough for me to get a laugh. Aviator Crash here, for some reason, cracks me the hell up. I know it's the outfit he wears when he's in the plane in Crash 3, but when you take him out of the plane and put him in a car, he looks like Mr. Toad. <laughs> it's adventure mode Jeez. itself for single player where you'll get the most coins without going online, or, of course, by replaying the stages in single race time trials in order to beat Entropy's ghost and unlock him as a racer. Small nitpick too, why is it that you have to race in the time trial at least one time first in order to unlock the chance to beat Entropy's ghost. Why can't the ghost be available to race right at the start? I mean, look at this example here. I even managed to beat Entropy's time on my first go, but it didn't count because I hadn't officially unlocked hmm. the chance to race him yet, meaning I just had to do the race again to beat him, which I already proved I could do perfectly fine. Why do you have to unlock the chance to race him and then beat him? It's stupid. I don't get it. Oh, God, that was tricky. Just got myself another CTR token. And did you see how close I was to losing the race? Check it out. We crossed the line at exactly the same time. Oh my god! You okay, okay there, Caddy? You guys know why I made Bandicoot Month June, right? It's because June is my birthday month. Crash 3 was the first video game I ever played. Crash just so happens to be one of my favorite franchises of all time. And the Insane Trilogy released in June 2017. Uh -huh. Along with this game releasing... Caddy, I was about to say, is there any point to this that you have, at least? Or some point at all? Can you tell us why you're telling us this, actually? Just, just wanted to figure out. So you look me in the eye and explain to me right now why I not only got exactly the same time as Tiny Tiger here, but that uh, Oh. That the time lap you both finished at is your 
birth date. Okay. That's actually kind of impressive. Bravo, Caddy. Yeah, you get a standing applause for that. That's that's actually impressive. Huh. That actually is something that has never happened when I played a game for a certain amount of days or, like, time. In fact, I'm still trying to finish certain games nowadays. One in particular that I'm hoping to get back to as a Let's Play. And two of us crossed the line at the same time. This game was made for me. Um... What, what's happening? Bless you? I'm nitro-fueled too! Off to our first boss race against Ripper. Yeah, I think you probably should get that checked out, bud. He had an intro in the original game, but this one is a lot better than him. Sitting there for a job interview. So tell me about a weakness oh, of you. Yeah, they went all out for the boss introductions in this game. Wasn't expecting this either. There's new visual gags, slapstick, animations. They're way more entertaining. Also, for all the bosses and extra content, I decided to race as the retro PS1 skin characters because I'm a slave to my nostalgia. The ending cutscenes are different as well, which I found to be rather enjoyable, but sometimes you get... <laughs> Um, what is happening? Design as a whole and how clean and fresh it all sounds. Not only does the soundtrack get the proper boost and in instrumental depth and quality it deserves to make it way more audible than the original game, but Josh Mansell, the original composer, was even brought back as the overseer for the new music. And just okay, like was, nothing was held back for the sake. That's of the impressive. Console. Every other sound effect. He definitely like knew how to do real good music for the original Crash trilogy. Splashes in water. Plus, I loved the echoing car engines and character banter when in caves and tunnels. <laughs> And even loved the missile noises when they made an impact. The missile sound wow! Have you ever heard of a chunky missile before? That was some nice explosion sounds. You could take a bite out of them. You could also take a bite out of the multiplayer. This was one of the standout things of the original game. Four player split screen co-op. And here it's no different. But you don't need a boomerang to get it working. The game <laughs> okay. Yes, here as well, which makes things a little better since Mario Kart multiplayer on Switch is exactly the same. But in Mario Kart, I've never been called a smack man. I'm not addicted. I don't even own a needle. The races are great fun, and so are the battles. Man, the battles can get outright sadistic in local co op environments. Last man standing, capture the flag. It's such a great time. But if you haven't got other people in your home to play with, then you may want to consider the online feature. Being able to play CTR mm. online is the bomb, son. Again, the battles are great fun, and so are the basic races. And personally, I've never felt that confident in ever trying to get good online at any game in my life before. Not Tekken, not even Mario Kart, but this, I want to keep practicing. Sorry. I love playing all the <sighs> of this game Something online. As a bonus, eye. it's also here where you'll get way more coins to spend in the pit stop shop. Well only sometimes. Yeah, this was something I never quite understood. The coin rewards for online play felt absolutely 100% random. I got 180 coins for coming second and then 600 coins for coming first. But wait, next I got 72 for second. Huh? I got 400 for first, 300 for fifth, 600 for first, 400 for first, 80 for first, 500... Guess the reward first, system in the game is broken. 120 for first. What is going on here? I'm not sure if this is based on the time of day that you play, how long you play, what character you use, what track you race, how many people are in your lobby, what rewards are in the pit stop shop. I do not for the life of me understand or it's the reward amounts are all about. that i guess After loads of people sent me a reddit post that tried to explain it but hey since ctr is a much more mechanic heavy and i would argue skill-based kart racer than mario kart at its core you may find some of the online players will not show mercy i got into some brutal fights online but if you're finding yourself lagging behind a little too far try this out no i'm not talking about boosting at every opportunity or saving drop items from missiles and every other basic tip try out this tip use the brake button a little more often and only tap it yeah no joke, the amount of people I see fly into wars or fall off the stage is downright embarrassing online, and it's because they're too focused on going fast and boosting, but not staying on the track. So don't be afraid to break. Only during a turn, and only in little tiny taps, so not to slow you right down. You can turn really tight with the okay. tap break, so don't be afraid of it. And also, if you jump off of a ramp into a 90 degree turn, knowing full well you will not land into a successful drift or go into a wall, try this out. After your jump, let go of accelerate, tap break, and do your turn. Wow! Do a tight mid -air That's actually a helpful tip, tip there, Caddy. The nice. Ramp jump. This or as that one guy would put it, nice. All the time in the entropy ghost races, in the relic time trials, and online. It just gives you a little bit more mid air control along with the speed. Correct that with a bit of practice and correct use of items, and voila, you'll be able to win a race while being exploded by TNT. <laughs> Or get so far ahead that you'll be hit, but actually end up being thrown over the finish line. 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's the kind of stuff that happens on competitive play. The online match, though, was when I got myself into a lobby, but then everyone decided to leave and I was stuck at the start line. All on my own. <laughs> oh, oh, poor caddy. And even better, I was held prisoner here because the game wouldn't let me pause and quit the match, so I was just here on my own, enjoying the smell of the sewers. My poor, sweet little... Penguin. Okay, so to be fair to the developers of this game, Beanox, this only happened to me one time out of dozens upon dozens of completely fine, completely solid and stable online races, at least in the UK on my PS4 with my internet. I know it's different for every single person, but why couldn't I just quit when that kind of thing happened? Why did I have to force reboot? Surely that can be fixed. And while on that topic, glitches! Uh... Once again, this is not a buggy game at all. It's more polished than my head was last year. But very yeah. rarely the game likes to do this kind of thing. Especially on PS4 games. Is that not enough? This turtle didn't feel like bouncing me here. This ramp in the sewers didn't allow me to cross the gap even though I'm in the jumping animation and I had a boost immediately beforehand. In fact, in oh, the shoot. Race, I blatantly crashed into a wall here, but the game decided to sidestep me around it. Oh, the opposite happened. When I was on my last lap for a relic race in Polar Pass as well, which is already hard enough, on the very last jump before the finish line, I ended up clipping through the level. Yeah, sure, you could argue I didn't land perfectly on the track, but I don't know why I couldn't just land on the barrier instead of fall through a pin-sized hole. And even better, it happened immediately again, but this time I already drove forward on the floor. That's just picky game, I was already... Wow. Driving. The same thing also happened to me on the final... Probably didn't even try to patch that, that, I guess. Race ...in the adventure mode by far, but at this point, these are the only three times this is ever occurred for me in around 20 plus hours of playing so it's not a big issue just irritating want to see what else isn't a big issue i don't for the life of me know why my boost decided to attack pinstripe here but whatever i'm not complaining he deserved it the worst glitch for me though happened right here where i was supposed to unlock oxide's car for beating the adventure mode 100 and i beat it 101 unlocked oxide as a character but still haven't got the ship yet considering he okay. wasn't playable in the original without hacking the game and that he has the coolest car don't even know how game, he would have been able to control that but Clue why. This is the All right. I really wanted to do since you couldn't do it in the original. Maybe it's because I didn't One second. Outside. Sorry about that. Had to answer a message real quick. But anyway, there you go, guys. That was my reaction to Caddy's, or sorry, Cat Icarus's review of Crash Team Racing Nitro Fuel. Then, yeah, I gotta say it's really interesting. Then again, I did say at the beginning of this kind of grew out of like racing games and stuff like that. Not gonna lie, they're still cool looking and they're fun to play. Just personally for me, I grew out of them, but I know a lot of you watching out this love racing games, or uh, some of you probably like racing games, and yeah. anyway, yeah, this definitely was an interesting video, and got a little weird at first, but hey, it's fun to get back into Cat Icarus's reviews and stuff, and if anyone has any more Cat Icarus, uh reviews you want me to react to, uh, let me know in the comments section down below, and I will try to get to them. And yes, there's a certain Let's Play you've all been asking me to get back to. I will try to get back to that as quick as I can. But anyway, with that being said, thank you all for watching this video. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and click that notification bell to never miss a new video. And with that, I will see all you awesome guys and gals later. Bye-bye!